pin for the right brain and the ankle bone is connected to the uh, leg bone. Leg bone connected to the In the uh, 60s and 70s, if I can remember, <laughs> we used to say uh, 707 is the uh, area code for heaven, or something like that. You know. uh, so. <coughs> Clearly, one of the great uh, uh, philosophic agricultural counties in the world, <laughs> for which we uh, all give you. Deep, deep gratitude. Uh, uh, there's no accident, therefore, that some of my closest friends uh, live in this area, uh, and I'm pleased to have the chance to be uh, here with uh, two people that for 25 years have been working with me to uh, preserve the archives and to preserve the scholarly records uh, and some of the artifacts of the use of uh, vegetables and plants and drugs uh, to expand human mind throughout history. Uh, they run flashbacks books uh, 
Where's Michael and Cindy Horowitz? Yeah, all right, yeah. Great, great, great citizens of 707. Uh, and with them is uh, Uri Horowitz, or Uri, Uri Ryder, by the way. Uri, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, their other two daughters, uh, Sunyata and Manona, are not here, but they are in our hearts. Uh, also, uh, Karen and Billy, huh? Okay, stand up. These are uh, wonderful, wonderful friends who have been working uh, to preserve these artifacts and records. They're a real scholar of the, uh, of the history of the brain. Uh, I'm also very, uh, very happy to have a here tonight, some of that we go way, 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 way back together. Uh, he is a, uh, one of the uh, basic members of uh, the greatest multimedia, hyperdelic, psychedelic, light and sound, truth and world history, the Grateful Dead. Huh? Because the real show tonight is uh, the work of uh, two groups that I mentioned, uh, Hyper Like Video, Andy and Dave from uh, formerly Tokyo, now 415, <laughs> and uh, Alora and uh, Genesis Piorage. Alora, Genesis Piorage, or Psyche TV. There you go. Uh, yeah. There's a special bond of affection between the three of us and the two wonderful uh, young daughters. Because uh, I know this happened, I'm just not making it up. About 1969 or 68, I went to London, got to the airport, and tried to go in to see, I think it was either Moody Blues or maybe John Lennon or some disreputable person like that. <laughs> and 40 little men with uh, stamps and little books came up and said, You're not allowed in England. I said, Why not? I said, uh, the Home Office has determined officially that you are a threat to public. Or her morals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't deny that. But, uh, <laughs> but even today, 25 years later, they still hold at the end. And how about a 72 year old man that's a threat to the British Empire's fit and moral? I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all this is to lead up to uh, our uh, little trio here. Um, there are two other people that cannot go into the England today because they're a threat to uh, law, order, and morals, uh, Genesis uh, and Laura. Uh, as you probably know, they started the house movement, the acid rock music. They did uh, all sorts of, uh, of uh, incredibly uh, mind-expanding videos, uh, and they were such a success that they're not allowed back in England. So, uh, <laughs> but greater tribute to Yeah. Now, later on, after we do the brain experiments, uh, we'll have a, 
Well, we'll call it a question and answer period because I ain't got no answers, all right? <laughs> Let that be said, right? We have a lot of, a lot of interaction and comment and argument, I hope. Uh, now, the title of tonight's talk is How to Operate Your Brain. And uh, kind of experimental. Uh, basically, we're using the old corny thing as a left brain, that's your mind which is orderly, linear, verbal, you know, and that, and that takes care of the external environment, limited as it is. You know, the uh, Eskimos have like 300 words for snow, but the people who live in the Sahara don't have one word for snow. You know that the Italians have 231 words for the female genitalia? <laughs> Whereas the English language has five. <laughs> Four of them are not used by Republicans, I mean, <laughs> The point I'm making here is that the left brain, the mind, is very limited, uh, both uh, linguistically, and that causes all the trouble. And it has been known for thousands of years uh, that uh, there are ways of activating your brain, of communicating, and not in a, in a verbal way. When you're, when you're talking brain to brain, uh, you know, no matter what So we're going to come. The aim of it, I'll tell you right in front is if you want to learn how to operate your brain, you have to go out of your mind and use your head. Uh, you have to do it precisely, carefully, and that if you can do uh, it's been done by wizards for thousands of years. As a matter of fact, all of our minds have been programmed by some wizards, even an hour in the past. Uh, we're going to try to uh, demonstrate uh, how this is done with the hopes that uh, you will start doing it more and more yourself. Because someone's programmed our brains, and uh, very skillfully, and, uh, and by the way, I want to warn you, there'll be time, we're going to try, we're going to try to, uh, it's like commercials, you know, scrambled up, you know, like a old beer commercial. There are certain points we're going to try to get, to get into your brains. Now, we're, we're warning you ahead of time, there'll be a little uh, label as to what we're going to imprint your brain with. Like, Eyeballs, earballs, whatever. So if you don't want to have your brains printed by any part of it, just close your eyes so much we for that. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> now, when the lights are on, you'll know that I'm talking to you in the English language uh, of the late 20th century using minds. And when I say uh, to uh, uh, the Laura, let's be gent, and to Mary up there, uh, the lights will go out. And uh, the right brain uh, will hopefully be uh, uh, activated in each of your skills. So, Mary, uh, jam the day and down with the lights. And uh, Jen, do it. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I need the other chicken.
societies have been held together in shared realities, programs imprinted on their brains by light and sound. your brain turn off your mind unfocus your eyes you don't know what it is it's chanting your eyeballs it's been dating you with forms of shape that you can't label good you're getting there Socrates um, gave us some techniques. The first technique 
was uh, he didn't lecture where we're going now. Uh, he would uh, he didn't uh, shit ten commands or ten suggestions uh, for your discussion group on a wild vocabulary. They go to a small group and uh, comfortably all reclining on, on couches. And he was simply asked questions. What's the meaning of life? What is beauty? How can we improve the society? Of life? And then you ask, and then you answer. Suddenly you, you, you disagree. Suddenly you're performing philosophy. Socrates taught us the philosophy of not something practiced in ivory powers by bearded professors. It's a, a performing philosophy is a team sport. You have to have someone there. Send it back. That's quantum physics. That's Einstein's relativity. Socrates did another uh, very technical uh, advance. He uh, he did use the, uh, the botanical and vegetable substances available at the time. There are many stories about how Plato had to be carried home. <laughs> now, boys and girls, I'm not advocating moves, okay? Uh, uh, whatever. I'm simply pointing out the facts, Max, that uh, this happened in Greece. And uh, uh, years later, when I wanted to go to school, graduate school, what am I going to study? What am I going to study at World War II? Psychology. Because psychology is the key to know thyself. Wrong. Right? I discovered that psychology of practice back then was a, a monopoly of the medical profession. They'd have a psychiatric degree to do that. Uh, and uh, if you had some performance problem, you know, you're slump, but you know, you're down and you're uh, in your own personal, you know, friendliness and your depression index goes up, you know, everyone goes to the slump. You go to a medical doctor, you, he diagnosed your disease and put you on a couch to cure you. And you think of anything more designed to increase helplessness. Uh, so uh, I thought about Socrates and I went to the uh, I went to the head of the Palo Alto Veterans Hospital, later famous for having given an LSD, having paid Alvin Ginsburg and Ken Kesey to take LSD. <laughs> and I said to the head of the hospital, I wanted to do some research on, on people coming together to talk about their problems. You can't do that, it's illegal, it's moral. If patients exposed their neuroses, their untidy psychoses to each other, it's contagious. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the obsessive compulsive will be all sorts of terrible ideas and paranoid. God knows what the anal patient will do to the oral patient. <laughs> so, uh, Anyway, uh, I did this, we did this research. A group of us came together and did it. It was a Unitarian church in Berkeley. We called it counseling. Ah, uh -huh, that's okay. Uh, and I'm proud to say that uh, I was one of the first ten, maybe ten psychologists in this country to recognize the power of a group. It all came back to Socrates, get that small group together. But it was known as group therapy. I looked at the yellow pages of the LA uh, directory, and there's like a half column of psychiatrists. And there's seven pages of every fucking kind of group therapy you can think of. If there's not one problem you have or your relatives have, or one uh, orifice in the body or something, there's not a group of them. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, then, a uh, few uh, years later, uh, I went to Harvard University. I was invited to Harvard University because they wanted someone to come in and kind of shake things up and uh, introduce new methods of behavior change. <laughs> Little did we know. Anyway, the time was right, and uh, two professors at the University of Mexico uh, City turned me on to what's known as the Sacred Mushrooms of Mexico. I learned more in five hours than I had received 50 years as a psychologist. <laughs> and I learned that there is inside the human brain a infinity, universes of meaning that uh, uh, I call six psychotic hallucinatory by the, uh, rightly so, by people who want to control our minds. So back to Harvard, we started what became known as the uh, Harvard Psychedelic Research Project. We had one disadvantage, we didn't have a clue as to what we were doing. <laughs> because in Western psychology, you think there's not one word about uh, these experiences, except they were psychotic hallucinations. And then it happened, it always happens. If you're ready, if you're ready, you know that the teacher will come. I saw in the, in the paper that just down the avenue, MIT, was a man who had written three books about the so-called psychedelic experience. How about Sussex? How about a round of applause for Alvin Sussex? Oh, yeah. A great hero.
So I called down to Huck City, that would be kind of timid, you know, and I explained, you know, what we were doing, and I can't imitate his accent, but I said, there's something like that. But let me get this up straight. You see the chaps over there, all that are, uh, uh, of all these, so I got up and and he was able to explore consciousness, and I said, uh, yes, sir, he said, uh, what's your address? I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> And Huxley came, and the first thing he said was, get out of this clinic, my brother, don't do this in the clinic, don't do this in the hospital. Uh, who's got a nice house? And my house, sat around by the fire, said, this, this experience must be done in small groups. And it's done comfortable surroundings and encourage spiritual ambitions and uh, give a sense of support and aesthetic uh, uh, comfort. Uh, never alone, because, because, one of the most terrifying experiences is to find yourself suddenly swooping around in your full right brain, lost in universes of, of, of uh, uh, unnameable, unlabeled shit. <laughs> and you're all by yourself, and there are many white coats, pure and empty, flashing your eyes, and can you think of anything worse than that? <laughs> it's that alienation, the sense that you're the only one lost in this universe that caused called the ultimate bad trick. <laughs> Then we realize that the sight of the youth, it's a very simple thing to have the image for done for 25,000 years, no big deal there. But where did it come from? Where, where did these experiences come from? Well, obviously from the brain. At that time, it was a taboo. Almost a few mention of the word brain. Studies of psychological effect was almost, the brain is hardly mentioned back in those days. So uh, we, uh, we began studying the human brain. We also began trying to communicate this experience, not in words, but in what we might talk, call brain talk, or brain, uh, brain language. And brain language, of course, is uh, mother media. There's only one word in the English language that can describe a uh, brain, full brain experience. It's the word mom turned upside down. W-O-W. Uh, back in 1963, I was doing pretty much the same thing I'm doing right now. As a matter of fact, uh, many of you remember that when we took over the, you know, the film in East in New York, and uh, I was standing in front of an audience with 12 slide projectors and the, the film's going. It was labor intense and very primitive, uh, you know, uh, saying things like, slide together and molecule embrace. I mean, uh, being far out for a Harvard professor. But, uh, but uh, now, 25 years later, 25 years later, technology, uh, thanks to Wozniak and Jobs and so forth, uh, has produced the uh, electronic technology that allows us to talk about operating our brain. I'm going to give you a brain commercial. The product I'm selling you right now is your own brain, all right? And I want to tell you, this is the greatest bargain you've ever heard in your life. The human brain contains uh, 100 billion neurons. Uh, well, can you shut the tape off for just a minute, please? And sh yeah, and the sound off for just a minute. Uh, and put a little light on here. I'm going to give you the staggering statistics about the three pound uh, universe you have within your, your skull. I told you 100 billion neurons. I always thought, you know, the, the neuron was like an off on switch, then right, axis, quick, 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 they pass it on like a relay, then I got wrong. It now it turns out that the average neuron is probably more, more knowledge processing power than a, a mini computer, not a main, mainframe computer. <laughs> when you think of it, neuron, don't think of a little switch, you think of a, an enormous, enormous hill, hillock. Of, of, of a seaweed, <laughs> and each strand of seaweed has hundreds of fibers coming out. Every neuron is in touch with 10,000 other neurons. So we're talking about knowledge processing, image creating, uh, potentiality that we cannot conceive of at this primitive time in the late 20th century. We simply don't know about the equipment we have. I'll make the prediction that in 20 years, I look back at it now, poor, dear primitives. They didn't know how to operate their brains, and they did. Uh, so, uh, 
incredible thing. And the glorious thing about the brain is this. We're all born with a hundred billion neuron brain. I'm sure there are different kinds of calories and all that, but still, we all start off with this enormous equipment, and how come you know, we don't use it? When you see on, on the news at you know, night, in Somalia, starvation, you see these little kids, swollen bodies, and swollen, you know, skinny little arms and legs, those enormous wide eyes looking at you, and you know the chance of that kid ever even growing to be a healthy person in like one in a thousand or ten thousand, the chance of ever getting to, uh, to come to a place like Sonoma State, like one in a million, and yet that kid has the same brain power as Einstein. It's the programming that fucks it up. It's the programming that makes it different. Uh, a beggar's in Calcutta, starving, same brain as Einstein. Murderous uh, thugs uh, like uh, Saddam Hussein and George Bush, you know? <laughs> The same brain outside. It's the programming that fucks it up. So now we ask the question: Who programs your brain? Can we have the tape run again, please? Lights off and sound. Who programs our brains? Him who controls your eyeballs and your earballs controls your brain. It's as simple as that. I ask you, how was it possible 800,000 years ago that a group of psychedelic wizards, control freaks, <laughs> stumbled on the secret of how to program brains? How to program brains? I'm talking about the Catholic Church centered in, uh, in Rome. How do they do it? 60 million Catholics from Istanbul way over there, Constantinople in the east, to southern Europe, northern Europe, up to Scandinavia. They never got to Ireland. <laughs> 60 million people who spoke 300 different languages, local dialects, who didn't even know the existence of each other, and yet every Sunday they would come to a church, yeah. And then they cross and they nail down and do that, you know, that little mumble jumbo thing. How do they do that? How do they get 60 million brains to accept that thing as reality? That God uh, died for your sins and you're going like this and all that. How do they do it? They had the bell. Yeah. Just like the drums. But the bell was the sound of God. If you were in a little village, you know, all you heard was the noise of, of animals and maybe thunder. The loudest thing you'd ever hear outside of thunder is the bell, even louder. And, and thunder comes from God, and the bell comes from God. I mean, that bell gets your fucking attention. You know? <laughs> like siren, like when you hit that bell, you know, you know. Uh, not to mention the, uh, the visuals. They uh, say we're peasants in France, okay? And our priest says, uh, hey, Marcel, hey, Maria, in three weeks from now, they, the cardinal is going to be in Chartres or in Paris. Go to the cathedral there. So we get in our burrows or we walk, take our family. We get, God, I can remember, you get to Chartres, the plaza, and there, my God, going higher, higher than a tree, higher than a mountain, is the cathedral of Chartres, the house of God. And there on top of you, the whole, there's a whole sitcom family. There's uh, the Virgin Father Joseph and uh, there's the uh, Virgin Mother Mary, and there's the big red heart there. That's the sacred heart of Jesus Christ. That's God. There's a door. The door to Shark Cathedral is as, as tall as this room. Walk in that, man. You're in the house of God. There's that one thing there that your eyeballs or earballs can listen to that you have back on the farm. You look up at that rose window. It's that wall. Sun coming through the, the retina of God, that's I had God. You never see nothing like that in the farm, uh, myself. That was sound. The Gregorian chant. I never heard that in a cow barn, myself. And the organ, the organ, yeah. This is definitely, uh, that's brain talk, that's brain sound, that's soul talk, yeah. And here comes the cargo. Come half a mile down the cathedral, he's been carried on a throne. And he's got a robe covered with jewels, with jewels. He's got a big shepherd's cross covered with jewels and his, 
this crown covering the jewels and all the, the, the uh, priests covering jewels, flashing reflections of candles on gold. Man, this is a, this is God. You're in heaven right here, this guy. And then the then the cardinal comes and says, uh, "Okay, down on your knees. Repeat after me." Yes, it is. Our Father who art in heaven, holy, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thine is the kingdom of the power of forever. Damn right. You are my shepherd. We're sheep. You go, God, ah, we never lose. No argument. Okay, yeah, good. Now, now uh, get off your feet. Now, whenever you go by man in this uh, church, you uh, go to Jerusalem and kill some Arabs or Jesus. Okay, no question. We go. Uh, the Catholic Church is covered. Uh, if you can dazzle the eyes and inundate the ear balls, the program is stuck in your commercial. It's the crazy it is, you know, Christ died for our sins, humanity's terrible, sure, no question of it. Because who can argue with the bells and the drums? And, uh, the brain loves to be illuminated, to be irradiated. The brain naturally loves to be sparkled. You just mean, brains love jewels. How come the very ownership of jewels means you're a noble person or a king or a duke? I mean, how come peasants can't have, working people can't have jewels? Uh, yeah, hit that good. Hey, hi. How's we hit it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Brains love jewels. Eyeballs love jewels. Sparkling. Come to think about it. The classic words for the full brain experience, for the soul experience, a thousand years, what they meant? Illumination. Illumination, yeah. Enlightenment. The eyes just love to be strobed and straight. With sunlight, with starlight. Enlightenment. The watch the perception. Reflection. Of the of the Get the attention of the full brain, flash, sparkle, dazzle, scintillate, those lights, lights, lights. Something going on for a hundred years, you know, some guy, you know, dazzles. A young lady, you know, diamonds, dazzle that diamond ring and she'll wash her socks forever, boy. <laughs> diamonds are not a girl's best friend, they're uh, the Pope's best friend. <laughs> Who controls your eyeballs? And prints your brain. The obvious solution. Be very careful where you flash your eyeballs and be sure that you're the one that's controlling the lights that hit your eyeballs. In the 60s, we used to say power to the people. Now we say power to the pupil. Power to the dilated people. Because when your pupils dilated, you can't focus. You can't focus. You can't read books. You can't. When, when your eyes are dilated, that means your brain is shut down. You're, you're ready to be brain foam, brain dog. And when you focus and narrow down and contract your eyes, yeah, you're ready. You're ready to focus and, you know, yeah. Learn how to dilate your pupils. And learn how to contract them. That's how to operate your brain. Step number one. Your drums too. Most of what I learned about the brain came from uh, the writings and personal conversations with a incredibly important American philosopher by the name of Marshall McLuhan. I want to ask, how many of you know the name Marshall McLuhan? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I find it amazing and still understandable. I go around talking to colleges, and many colleges, not in 
707, uh, Eric Cohen, but uh, when you get down to Alabama, Mississippi, they never heard of Marshall McLuhan. And that's no accident, because Marshall McLuhan, everything he said was to take power away from the, uh, you know, the uh, authorities. And, and uh, see, McLuhan said, McLuhan said, the medium is a message. What that means is that more important than what you say, the content of your communication, is the way you package your thoughts and communicate. And if you want to package your thought, be free, and you have to have 50 men shipping that in marble, I see it. <laughs> you're not really preaching freedom. Mark McGoon also said something so profound that I still get a chill when I repeat it. He said, if you change the mode, the medium of communication, you change society, you start a new religion, and you change the definition of God. Remember, you know, uh, hey, there we go, the light's uh, on, but keep the tape rolling, thing. I remember, this is, Selma, right? Yeah. Okay. You can, you can drift off on this stuff. I mean, that's all right. Okay, maybe we'll talk about uh, Marshall McLuhan. Uh, you need a message? Okay. If you want to change yourself, change your mode of communicating back to your thoughts. It's so obvious. Now, you can also change the definition of God. Remember, when we were, when we were shepherds, when we were uh, keeping a uh, domesticated animal, Ron was our shepherd. Yeah. He illuminated manuscripts for the word of God, and he had to be a monk with a, with a security clearance, um, and uh, he had to know the machine language of Latin. And, uh, you, were, you, were, you, you, you could read and write, not for yourself. There's no fucking creativity here, brother. I mean, uh, you're passing on the word of God and the Pope. It's interesting that when... Uh, Johann Gutenberg, to whom I pay tribute, invented the printing press, bang, changed, changed civilization, changed society, and changed ethics of God. The first thing you met the introduction of Adrian Sark, uh, the assembly line, suddenly instead of illuminated manuscripts, everyone could have a book, everyone could have a book. The problem is what language the book can be used, because you don't speak Latin, you don't speak Latin. Uh, Martin Luther King is Martin Luther. Uh, translated the Bible into German to be the language of the people. That's Protestants. Uh, the first thing that the Protestants did, you know, Calvin, Knox, Luther, the first thing they did was say, get the fucking jewels out of the church, okay? We don't want any towers. We don't want any uh, rose windows. God, from now on, is a... Uh, the Christian vision of marriage and family life. Right. <laughs> the word of God in Protestants comes from a mass-produced, factory-manufactured book. It's called a fucking holy book. And you'll find it in any motel you go to in any state of the union. That's the word of God. No longer given to you in the great, great sonorities of the Gregorian chant, I'll let you. No, sir. Our God's ministers were no longer robed, feudal, lords and stuff. They were like business-like, sober men uh, dressed uh, very, uh, very uh, industrial kind of class of God. Michael Blue says something more important. He said, just as machines liberate the body, so we don't have to dig in the ditches and under the pulling of stones for the Pharaoh's uh, tools, machines free us from beasts of burden and stuff. Machines are something else wonderful. Machines made it possible for us to move our bodies at the speed first of, uh, of uh, steamboats and then of, uh, of uh, motor cars and then finally of jet engines, you know, around the globe at the speed of sound and more. Machines liberate the body and move the body. Electrons do the same thing for your brain. Electrons are vehicles for the brain. Electrons uh, allow your, your brain your mind to flip through uh, thousands of performances and additions and subtractions would take a hundred men to do in like 
Okay. So just as machines liberated and empowered the uh, the uh, body, so the electrons empower empower the minds and the brain. But more important, more important, electrons are the language of the brain. Electrons are the language of the brain. Brains basically understand electrons. Why? Because your brain, remember, is this a uh, hundred billion neurons, and each neuron is, is electrical. Talk about digits. I mean, talk about yeah. Uh, the language of the universe, the language of the brain, is digital. The Kuhn said that uh, the future will be electronic. A new breed will develop. The name of this will be a global village because we'll be able to travel, uh, move our brains and our eyeballs around. Uh, at the speed not a sound of light. Yeah, uh, turn these lights off, please. Jack up the sound. You know? All lights off. I hope that's not going to change your good ring habit. 
Marble cigarettes paint. Tony's got three million dollars to take ten guys and a crew down. Rafts, uh, something of the uh, Grand the, the Canyon, the Grand Canyon, right? Three million dollars to shoot a commercial that took like thirty seconds. Uh, thirty million dollars to buy the uh, time. Thirty-three million dollars. And you see all this stuff going on, and the, it's brawling guys, and the sperm coming up, and, and then I got and it said, Marble. Come to my world kind of game, I think we're hell. So, uh, we come to the logical conclusion if the people with the power and the money understand that the way to get people to do what you want them to do is to scramble the rear drums and the right drums, uh, overload them, flash them, give them a yeah, 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 and then say, uh, you know, the night belongs to you or me, whatever. If uh, they'll pay thirty million dollars to do this, and the politicians know how to do it now, you know, the Willie Horton and all that, how come the average individual American doesn't do it? We've been like in a few days. We didn't have the limited manuscripts. Uh, I think it's inevitable that in three or four years, five years. This point: who controls your screen? Controls controlling your brain will be so obvious. I'm gonna shock you now. I'm gonna shock you now. When a child goes to first grade, they'll not be sat down in a row and given a Paleolithic wood stick with lead in it and a piece of birch bark or paper and stripping the, the uh, Amazon rainforest. Yeah, it is optional. You can read and write, it'll be like Pinky or ballet or something. Everyone should learn like to, to do some handcraft like that, like writing, reading. Uh, your kid will be taught the first first day in first grade how to make commercials. <laughs> and that's the way you communicate it important. Or black treatments, we all know that a trailer will be better than a movie, right? How to make a trailer, in other words, so that when your kids come home in 10 years, right now, kids are homeschooling. What happened at school today? Nothing. Well, that's right, as a matter of fact. <laughs> in 10 years, something wrong. We're all waiting for the kid to come home. They'll run in, or she'll run in, and she'll pop on the computer uh, screen, and uh, there will be a uh, demonstration of E equals MC squared, or uh, here we're all uh, red blood cells zooping, zooping down the, um, down the, uh, Circulatory system, or, uh, or your, your hydrogen, your hydrogen, I'm oxygen, like that. Uh, uh, and the commercial is H2O is water. I mean, if Marlboro cigarettes uh, and, uh, make a little beer can do it, why shouldn't we be using it to uh, communicate with each other? And the beautiful thing about it is it's a global language. It's a global language. But I asked that company, so how come? You're doing a Marlboro commercial when you're not allowed to put cigarette ads in television. And the answer was, well, in every other country in the world, you can. And the point is, it's a global language. You don't have to speak French, English, whatever. When you see the brawny guys coming down to 10 strong men, Marlboro country, hard rock, you know, with rock and roll, that, you don't have to do this. All your ear, ear balls and your eardrums, uh, you know what's going on under this package. Everybody in the world knows that old red package, masculinity. A new language is developing. Just like McLuhan said that a new language is developing, that's the language of the brain, not of the mind. Socrates, uh, 
not see that teamwork, but don't break in that classroom. The kid from Tokyo and the kid from South Africa and the kid from uh, uh, East Europe. I mean, uh, you, you can take your classes uh, in the global multimedia language of electrons, uh, which are the language of the galaxy, the language of the atom, and the language of the brain. things and I gave you Adam domination over all those things and 
I'm going to give you a partner, a helper named Eve, a plucker, whatever her name is, I'm going to get you rid of it on that day. He said, now there, do what you want in this paradise. Uh, there is two, uh, two uh, food and drug regulations. <laughs> you all see that tree over there? Boy, well, that's the tree of immortality. Don't you fuck with that because uh, that gets into uh, Proposition 161 and chronics and <laughs> health food. Uh, you want to hear more of God than you do? I said, no, sir. And, uh, and you all see that tree over there? That's the tree, the fruit of that tree. That's the, the tree of knowledge. And if you eat the if you eat apple from that tree, the minds will fall from your from your mind and you'll be able to, to see everything and, and be a God like me. You want to do that, do you? And I said, no servant. There is Eve. It was Eve that took the apple. It was Eve that uh, turned on the full brain, because the brain is the universe, the brain is the universe within. You had a baby you better try this. Uh, Anyway, in the years of 1976, it's been so fucking slow. The black and white screens, alphanumerics, word processing, what the fuck is this all about here? The instrument which is communicating with each other electronically. The March of Blue and Seven change your lives, and we're studying Lotus 1, 2, 3, and What the fuck's going on here? Smiling, so what's going on? And of course, it was, uh, it was uh, Apple Computer, the Macintosh. They gave us graphics, I mean, uh, really, uh, the Apple and the Macintosh, and then within the last three years, two years, two months, the last two hours, uh, new generations of uh, multimedia graphic uh, hardware software have been on the market now, and this, this won't stop, it's out of control now. Like every six months, every six weeks now, the Japanese and Dutch industry come out with a uh, image processing and storing devices that are 10 times more powerful than the last, a third of the cost, and smaller. CD-ROMs on Nintendo, CD-ROMs on Sega Genesis PlayStation, uh, CD-ROMs on uh, NEC TurboGrafx-16, which costs $69 plus the uh, add-on. That means every kid, every kid in the third world, every kid in the inner city uh, will have, you know, uh, the ability with a disc, CD disc, you know, it takes a thousand copies, one CD round disc, uh, you got know, like a hundred books, plus sound, plus graphics, and maybe a few minutes of full motion video. And even like talk, that minutes is going up to an hour, and it's cost, listen, a CD round disc can be, a CD round disc can be duplicated, what, 50 cents or a dollar, maybe mass assembly, and on each disc there's the equivalent of a hundred books, that makes the publishing industries, I mean, just squirm. Yeah, tell that to a book salesman. You know we're cutting down Amazon rainforest because electronic information, and they can't stop us. And then you like, oh, sure, just right now, we're about to be broken. You can actually turn yourself on, I can you right brain, get stoned as you want to, with your own designer hallucinations. And it's illegal. Uh, but of course, what's going to happen? It all comes down, telepresence, local village, it all comes down to the uh, phone lines and satellite lines. It's going to be very easy, very easy for governments to want to control telephone lines and satellite dishes. But the one thing they cannot control is the compression. Compression. But now we have a CD ROM disk that uh, contains, what, a hundred. Uh, Books for a thousand copies they, they, in two or three years. Compression will be down to like a, a really maybe the size of a nickel. You'll have uh, a thousand books you plug it in. I'm telling you, within, a, <laughs> within 10 years, they'll have a city round coming from a round hill. <laughs> it costs like 50 cents each, and you just drive down the freeway and throw them out. And that little compressed thing will have uh, every subversive piece of uh, bus full motion graphics. And I have to plug it into your, your little hip pocket, uh, the three dollar Molina. Uh, well, I'm raving a little bit here. That's my job. I don't believe a word I said. My my job is to uh, no, give you some new ideas. Let's turn the uh, lights on. Huh? Uh, 
what matters is that you keep on churning it round. That's what matters. Let me say one thing. Uh... He doesn't even have a CD ROM, okay? <laughs> so, six months. <laughs> Soon. Yeah, the point is, the saying this is stressing it because there's an intimidation on the part of the, uh, you know, uh, that you know, a kid can't do it. Of course, the kids can do it and are ready to do it uh, with more facility than uh, yeah. uh, we have two young daughters here. Yeah. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Do you want me to say? <laughs> have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, shout, shout out. out. Can you get Sandals to start putting those acid for the dollar ends back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Coast 
because, as Timothy mentioned earlier, and it's actually not a joke, it's true, we are banned from our own country, disowned, exiled. But we always say it's exhilaration, because to not be wrong somewhere gives you a certain chance to make choices about where you locate and who with. And the great thing in California and the West Coast, which we found coming in cold from somewhere else, is this very deep sense of community and sharing. People are not anal retentive about what they've got or what they know. Yeah. <laughs> We're well, finally for ourselves, thank you. Well, you deserve it, you know. Why not? It's, it's the old story that, that people don't realise just how much they've still got there in their hand because it's always there. But what I wanted to then point out is the same thing with finance and everything else, or access. We got given a free um, subscription to the well, which is the computer okay. bulletin board that you can tap into on a modem. And we got given a free computer and a modem too. But thank you, California. <laughs> Through that, some people who work for Apple got in touch and said, we know that you're interested in cutting up information, rearranging it, permutating it. We'd like to build a cut-up machine for you. And I said, what's that? And they said, a floppy disk, which you can then put into anybody's Mac 2, put in any text or any graphics, and you can tell it to rearrange things in any order or through numerology or your grandmother's birthday, or the temperature that you take it. You can make it go through paragraphs, sentences, words, rearrange them, build them up, triple them, do it with image information. It's arrived in the post this week. So what we want to do next, we worked out the maximum it's going to cost is a dollar. And what we want to do is not give people pre-programmed virtual or other realities. Nice. We want to give them simple methods cool. to make their True. choices. Right. Their tool right. to make their choices yeah. as to how they want to Say be it, brother. Right. and yeah. rearrange what someone yeah. else said was the world. Say it, brother. Yeah. If you like that equipment, it's designed to put people in touch with each other, brains in touch with each other, tools, no final products. You know, it's inevitable, the first 15, 20 years of uh, so-called computer industry, I hate that fucking term, uh, they were naturally, you always base your uh, language and your rituals on the last, so you wanted uh, finished products in the industrial age, you didn't give someone a a toolkit, they build a car, you know, sold them a car, you kick the thing and drive it away. So any time people give you final products, uh, unless they're tools, and that's the aim of the, of the game here, to empower the individuals, and uh, yeah, it is happening. Okay, well, who's got a, yes sir? Head mounted display requires a uh, heavy computer that's going to change the world around you. You don't have to do that. It's like if you want to get the hearing, you have to put your nose and like that. If you want to do it, go ahead. We're not going to ban it. Do it. Get the head mounted display. But we're not arguing. Who, who do you want to talk about here? It's lady right here. All right. Who's lady right there? What? We have no idea. Cienega and San Vicente, if you know what I mean. And uh, it's now planned that on the first four Mondays in a row, starting November 19th to 17th, uh, four Mondays, 
we're going to be doing performances there, which we're going to demonstrate this new concept of the lecturer as a vocalist. And uh, we have, uh, Jen calls it transmedia. I like to call it transmedia. But we're going to have several uh, speakers uh, working with a, a group uh, to uh, demonstrate. Uh, we got to communicate with each other in terms of commercials, trailers, and MTV clips. Uh, 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 and T-shirts. And T-shirts. T-shirts, jackets, and riders, and also whiskey. He goes his outside home. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Addictions and twelve step programs? Getting into a rut. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, they're talking about uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. Yes, uh, as I said earlier, I'm proud to be one of the uh, psychologists that uh, actually my PhD thesis was the first doctorate thesis on uh, self help groups. Uh, uh, I must say, however, that. Uh, I think the danger of a self-help group becoming an institution and another mind-fucking organization, I don't basically uh, use the word addiction. I'm not sure that addiction is, I think it's a big scam about the word addiction. You use everything now, you're addicted to, uh, you know, I'm, I, uh, I'm very skeptical about self, about organizations that uh, ask you to say that there's a power stronger than, uh, my friends, Come on, you know what we're talking about here? It's a new fucking religion. And it's called humanism. And it's the oldest religion. And we say that divinity, that all the power is inside your brain. We don't even conceive of the power you've got with the hundred billion neurons and like that. Yeah. No matter what, what vision of, 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 uh, of uh, divinity that they, they come up with, we haven't begun to understand the potentiality of the power of the human brain when it's turned on by uh, psychedelic uh, vegetables plus electronics. Uh, they fit together. I don't really see, I think it's obvious to most of us that uh, the real breakthroughs in the software part of the computers were all done by uh, you know, psychedelic people from the city. And so if I'm in a conservative organization, I say, listen, yes, uh, you can now have the LSD experience uh, on your own screen, do it yourself. Uh, I talked to psychedelic audiences, I said, well, uh, uh, the street stuff is like a uh, trip simulation. <laughs> so we are, we are developing programs that try to uh, put you in a cycle of state. And uh, we're not in any way saying that uh, you should not use the, uh, see, the hardware facts are that the human brain has between 70 and 100 receptor sites, which have evolved over 100,000 years, botanical queendom, you mean the animal thing, whatever you want to say. There's a symbiosis here, and those receptor sites in your brain that uh, change your mood, expand, and all that, they're not put there by the devil or by uh, uh, crazed hippies from the 60s. Uh, there's a reason for them, and we have to learn how to use them. And I say to Nancy Reagan and to, uh, you know, to George Bush, listen, we've just begun to understand the psychedelic uh, substances and neurotransmitters and, uh, that uh, open up receptor site, we don't even have the vegetables for it. They say that in the, uh, in the Amazon uh, rainforest, there are probably dozens of uh, incredible vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> they were too stupid. We're not ready for it, but uh, so uh, it's not either or. Uh, it's, it's both hand. Michael, uh, this is Michael Harris and, uh, and uh, Billy Smith and uh, Cindy and Karen. I'm not Karen, I'm here, but who are the world leading authorities on, uh, on this. You want to say something, Michael? Here, take, take this. Yeah. Well, the Western Hemisphere far out shines the Eastern Hemisphere. A number of vegetables, psychedelic vegetables, are about 425 known ones. Only about 20 in the Eastern Hemisphere. And um, that's, you know, being in California and all that, where um, so much information pours through here. Thank you.
that um, it's, a, it's no wonder we're on the leading edge. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> Thinking for ourselves, 
Oh, what, what should we do? <laughs> and I said, do whatever you fucking want. And I sat back and I watched the translators. And the translators just started laughing. And then the French guard laughed. And then the English guard, I watched they were laughing going around the room. Fucking think for yourself and uh, we'll see you again soon. Good night.